Hi there. If you came from a previous video of this video series, then click in the chapter marker down below to start the video. If you just started this video and because you found this on YouTube, then you should be clicking on the uh, card here above to get you to the first video of the video series. Because this is more an interactive video series where you can click from one video to another depending on what your setup is. Thanks for watching. So today we want to install the Loopy SLT switcher. What this basically does is that if your stream dies from your phone or your, your encoder, then OBS switches to a be right back scene. And when your stream reconnects, then Loopy's uh, SLT switcher will switch you automatically back. So for that, first of all, we'll need to download the switcher. Uh, I will leave the link for it in the description. And we download the last version, which is 112. Um, it has a few fixes here. Um, find this over here. And get this downloaded. And I want the Windows Installer X. And then open that. Close the browser. Click on More Info. Goofy SST Monitor, and anyway. So we uh, accept the agreement. Next, GPL. Luffy says a demon to install. We want to download the OBS WebSocket HTTP. Now, in the past, um, the switcher was based on, or the switcher was interacting with WebSocket via Node.js. You don't need that anymore. We'll, uh, we'll get the OBS WebSocket HTTP, and this is compatible with WebSocket 5 and upwards that was included with OBS 28 and newer. Just downloading that. And let's say next. And finish. Okay. Now we need to configure things. So we'll go in here and we go to documents. And there's a new folder here called Loopy SRT Monitor. And in the uh, Loopy SRT Monitor folder, there is a README text. And that's what many people don't know or don't spot, is all your settings are explained here. Everything uh, that, that you need is, is in here. So either way, first things first, if you want to run OB, uh, uh, Loopy's SRT switcher with Node.js, and that you, for example, if you use the older WebSocket 4.9, you can use install command to install OBS WebSocket JS and then use Node.js. That's only if you have problems with the with the other one. So in the config ini, we open that with a Notepad, and then we open our OBS. And I have a scene. Let's say that's my opening scene. We take that as my opening scene. Um, we then uh, have a uh, SLTLA bailer box and we have the B right B, right? So B right B is already the same. Um, we'll call this for now, seem okay. Scene okay, so let's see. Uh, that would be SRTLA Bela box. And this is case sensitive. So you have to have this right. So scene. Basic scene bypass, what this does is if you select that scene, Loopy will not be switching. Then I need to specify my media source, which is here. Let's see, SRT Bela Box EU. SRT LA Bela Box EU. Ignore media source 2 for now. WebSocket password doesn't matter right now because we're using OBS HTTP. None of this is interesting right now. So, and then down here we have, or actually, hang on, go up here, web socket password, and get that from, from OBS. Tools, 
WebSockets are doing. So if you click on Show Connect Info, there's the password. Copy. OK. Go back to Loopy. So if Loopy is configured using OBS WebSocket JS, so using Node.js, then the WebSocket password is specified here. Because we're using OBS WebSocket HTTP, you can ignore that one. But you have to go instead here at the bottom, and you need to specify the WS password here. Um, that's a bit confusing, but that's just the way it is. And we should be ready to start Loopy now. Start the command. Mm, no. Okay, so let's see OBS. Tools, WebSocket server settings. All important is that you obviously enable WebSocket server. Enable authentication. You do not want the enable system tray alerts because it will constantly annoy you. So that's done. Right. Okay, and then we start Loopy. You can see it starts the uh, starts this little HTTP server here, and it has connected. And we go here. Bring this to the front, and you can see this, it has now switched to scene. So if I start a stream from my phone, and there we are, it has detected my stream and has switched over and we are now on a live scene. So if the stream dies now, let's stop this again, stop the broadcast. And switches to be right back. Yeah, for eight seconds it failed. Switches to be right back. And then if we go to start broadcast. And the switch is back. Yeah, that's Loopy up and running. And um, we go on to the next one. The things that I still have to show you, what is important here to get this running, is um, if you go into your OBS, you go to properties, the timeout is the important thing here. If the timeout isn't there, it won't work. The next video, we will be looking at multi streams, so multiple sources coming in and Loopy switching between them, and also maybe to uh, speed things up uh, with uh, grabbing bitrate from a relay. Um, so, but if this video was helpful, then um, please like and maybe subscribe to the channel and I'll see you another time. Thank you very much.